Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome on this, uh, finally, what I'd like to say, lovely uh, weather Friday afternoon. Uh, my name's Claire, and I'm a SCORE mentor, and I'm going to be here today just helping to facilitate this call and guide some questions that you guys all may have to uh, our guest of honor today, Senator Vingo Powell. Just a quick couple of things before we hand the floor over to Senator Gopal. SCORE is a nonprofit entity and we offer free mentoring and webinars or seminar services in normal times to local businesses. We here who are hosting this webinar today, we represent the Monmouth County chapter, but SCORE is a national organization and it's supported by the SBA. Just before I uh, hand over to Senator Gopal, um, I did launch a, po a poll a little bit earlier. Just wanted to get uh, attendees input about future webinar timing. Now that we're launching into the summer and heading into the nicer weather, wondering if Fridays at 3 p.m. is uh, the best time to do it. So curious of everybody's uh, responses. So just feel free to fill those in uh, as, the, as the call goes on. Um, going to have a Q&A function on the call. So if you could please submit your questions to the Senator through the Q&A function, please try not to use the chat because it's very difficult for us to monitor them and make sure we keep them in order. We really want to try and answer everyone's questions. You can post the question anytime you like. It's, uh, uh, we'll moderate them and pass them over to the Senator as, as they come in or as he's finished speaking. Again, um, welcome to the Friday afternoon webinar and I'm going to hand over to Senator Gopal. Thank you uh, very much, Claire. And uh, I appreciate very much everything SCORE does, not just now, but uh, even in the past. I know I met with uh, a number of you in, at Brookdale at one point um, and uh, talking to Bill Atkins and Arthur Schlashback and some of the other people involved in SCORE. I know uh, it's really, uh, and I, I hate to use the word undervalued only because it's not as known and that's what I'd love to try to do is just make sure as many business owners know how valuable SCORE is and everything you're doing. Um, you know, we're watching every day uh, the, the curve uh, flattening. I think we're at a place now where hospitalization numbers are lower than 4,000. It's a lot different than two months ago when I was literally on the phone with uh, doctors and nurses uh, and hospital workers who were in tears because they couldn't handle the caseload and calls with funeral funeral uh, home parlors who couldn't deal with the bodies that were outside in vans just waiting uh, or dealing with family members who uh, were warning that they couldn't they couldn't uh, mourn with their loved ones who had just passed. Uh, New Jersey's floating somewhere around 10,000 uh, tragic deaths right now, a little under that, um, 285 today. I, I truly believe uh, New Jersey has taken some of the most aggressive social distancing possible. Um, and because of the steps that our state took and the leadership that I think that, that collectively both parties and everybody, but most importantly to the 9 million plus residents of New Jerseyans took in social distancing, every health study from, from President Trump to our Department of Health uh, states that those numbers would be about eight times more than 10,000 we had if we didn't take the steps that we've taken. So now that that's happened and those steps have taken, it's, it's more important now than ever that we start figuring out how we can open this economy. But we do it in a way that's responsible uh, and uh, at least for the next six to eight weeks, uh, make sure that we protect as many people as possible. Uh, we can still have someone who's asymptomatic still being a carrier and, uh, and infecting their parents, grandparents, uh, and other loved ones that might have weaker uh, health compromised systems, immune systems, or, or folks that are just generally older. Um, as we see a number of these deaths are happening in our assisted living facilities. But we're t the state is taking steps every day to start opening pieces of the economy. It's, it's a little bit like a faucet uh, where you open a little bit each day and make sure that the numbers, I, look, I think realistically numbers are going to go up, but the question is to make sure that we return to some normalcy and at the same time um, keep the hospitalization uh, rates down. Um, we know the number one uh, fighter in this is social distancing. So the question is how we social distance as we reopen our businesses and our economy. Uh, we saw in the last few days, last week, obviously, parks, and golf courses, this week we saw a number of things starting today, elective surgery, construction, non-essential curbside retail, 
uh, non-essential retail for curbside pickup. Um, uh, I think I mentioned elective surgeries. We've, we've, we're starting, and I think next week we're going to see more stuff. We saw guidance yesterday uh, on beaches that are going to be open for Memorial Day, beach clubs, et cetera. Um, we had a call this morning. I've actually had a few calls now with individual towns throughout the day, but a call this morning with our with the 18 towns in my legislative district, which goes uh, which goes from um, Freehold uh, Township, Colts Neck to the shoreline, uh, Long Branch, Asbury Park, everything in, in the middle, Ocean Township, Tinton Falls, Shrewsbury, West Long Branch, that whole area. And we had all of our 18 towns, business administrators, mayors, many of our business leaders to talk about how we can start opening up the outdoor space. We know as the governor who he is the only one, him and his team are the only ones who can decide when things open. It's not me, it's not anybody else, it's not your congressperson, but when they decide, we need to be ready. We, we believe that it's gonna be 25% restaurant capacity uh, and some degree of capacity for inside, um, inside retail. And we don't know that for sure. We don't know when it's gonna be, but that's the understanding that it's most likely gonna be. Uh, if I had to guess, I'm going to say June, but um, again, no way to know for sure. Um, numbers keep going down. we got to make sure they continue to stay down. Um, but what our towns are doing, which is really great, is they're talking about how we expand the outdoor area and, and really do this every way possible. So we've encouraged and are, are um, pushing government leaders to utilize every outdoor space possible. What land does the government own, whether it's vacant lots, whether it's side streets, um, what can they do? I, I just got off a call with Red Bank with uh, Council Representative uh, Kate Trigiano from the council, as well as their borough attorney and their, or their business administrator, Ziad Shahidi, specifically say, well, all right, let's get Red Bank. It's gonna be, this is going to be tough, but we can do this. So when we reopen, we know we got to be careful for the month of June and July. Um, how do we get everything open and what space can we utilize? So that might mean closing down some side streets, maybe closing down some main streets. Um, we've talked to ABC about expanding the liquor license uh, to outdoor areas as long as it's contiguous to the restaurant. And we're, we're trying to figure that out with, their, with them right now. So if you're a business in Red Bank and you're on Mama Street or you're on, and you're on uh, Broad Street or wherever you may, may be, how do we find additional outdoor space for you, for tables, for your customers, uh, for your patrons or more outdoor space if you're a retail store. How do we find that? How do we make that work? Obviously, a lot of this is weather permitting, but this really takes a time now to try to be as creative as possible as as, uh, as government leaders to try to make sure we do everything possible to uh, for businesses to succeed. I know Asbury Park is going to be pushing a message. Of, it's not it's not possible for everybody, obviously. Uh, but a message of, of, of uh, Ubering in and bicycling and, and doing what you can, uh, because I know they're taking serious steps and looking at their retail space also and expanding it outdoors, as is Long Branch. Long Branch is potentially talking about closing all their side streets off Broadway to utilize that space for tenting uh, so folks can do it. Because if we know the capacity is 25%, once we get outside and we know the rules are six, six feet distance, and that's the best way to social distancing. It maximizes the space for all these different venues. And I think we have a, a responsibility to try to do this. And obviously it's gonna change week by week, uh, every two, three weeks, as we see where the data and numbers are. As this is all happening, the most important piece of this is testing is increasing dramatically. Every day testing is increasing. Uh, yesterday, the governor put in, uh, signed a, an, an order of a bill that we have in the Senate that I sponsored that, that just got passed unanimously to allow pharmacies to test. Um, we think that most pharmacies will be begin testing soon. Uh, urgent cares are testing as testing increases and it's increasing at an incredible rate. Um, and Rutgers is doing a lot of great things. I'm sure some of you heard about the Abbott testing. Um, we're gonna see uh, more and more companies testing as that price continues to go down for the test kit um, to a lower rate uh, on a regular basis. At least you have to for the, for the first few weeks of June. Temperature checks are one thing, but you know, with, with the asymptomatic carriers, it makes it a little harder. Um, it doesn't mean it's not helpful. Certainly, certainly if folks have a fever, they gotta stay home, but for those who may not know, or they might just think they got a tickle in the throat because um, they have allergies or whatever, we wanna make sure. And the best way to do that because of how contagious this virus is and to protect everybody else's testing. So I think you're gonna see a lot of scenarios at the end of May and in June as we go in, where businesses are gonna walk in 
and uh, testing oppor opportunities uh, are going to be, in some sense, mandated to make sure that happens. And as that increases, we're going to be headed in the right direction. Uh, all uh, independent studies from, from Dr. Fauci all the way down to the state health and county health predict another, another wave uh, in the fall. It's really important that we all are prepared and hopefully our testing capabilities are there. Uh, what we went through these last few months were in a lot of ways tragic. The fact that here we are in the United States of America and we're, we're begging for gloves and masks and hand sanitizer is a real problem and it, it talks about our need in a global market on, on rebringing manufacturing here in the United States that we have to go we have to go to China and other countries to get hand sanitizer it makes no sense. Uh, we passed a number of bills um, in the legislature, we're trying to figure out every every step of trying to make it easier for businesses. So uh, mixed drinks and cocktails is now law. It should be law any minute now. Passed both houses yesterday. The governor signed. Um, I know a lot of folks uh, that's important for restaurants who want to sell sangria to go, margarita to go. It's going to be incredibly more important in, in September and October. We've also expanded things for breweries and distilleries, other places. Um, we're looking at uh, all types of retail right now. Um, the hair industry is a tough one, clearly. I need a haircut, as do a lot of other uh, folks probably right now who, who haven't been secretly getting their barbers in. But uh, it's an industry that we, we need to figure out, and that's going to involve uh, gloves, masks, the whole nine yards. And we're not talking about a permanent thing. We're talking about the first few weeks until we can make sure that this curve keeps going down uh, and flattening. And that's what's important. So. As we try to figure through those things, um, we've had a number of industries have reached out to us with their proposal. Uh, I had a, um, a CrossFit and I think it was a Cheeseberry sent me sent us a great proposal on how they would social distance, do everything the right way. So we're pushing that with the governor's office for their considerations. Uh, and we need to literally do that with every industry. Every industry knows best how they're gonna handle this. And it's gonna take a lot of personal responsibility. Someone asked why we don't mandate masks. How do you mandate masks? You're gonna have police officers giving fines to people who aren't wearing masks. This, this involves a lot of personal responsibility on behalf of New Jerseyans who have done this for the last two months and done it really, really well, which is why we're in a, in a decent position right now. Um, you think about 10,000 people, it's a lot of people. And we had those deaths by everybody, literally 98% of people sitting at home and we still had 10,000 deaths. Um, that's why this is, this, is, this, is, this is gonna be nervous and it's gonna be, it's gonna to be tough as we do this. And I think you're gonna see some spikes, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop. It means we just gotta figure out how we can make sure we have an economy that works, that's responsible, uh, while at the same time uh, protecting the health of, of those we love. Um, a lot of folks are being creative as far as um, uh, Count Basie Theater is working with um, the Blue Grotto uh, Mammoth Park over at Ocean Port. They're talking about doing some outdoor car concerts. I know Ocean Township was talking about doing something similar. Um, all these things I think are on the table and our goal is to try to push this out. But I can tell you on our call this morning, we had 18 towns in my district. Every single one of them was super receptive. Every mayor, some have it easier, you know, Colts Neck, they have a lot of land there. So they got a little easier stop versus an Asbury or Red Bank, which is a lot more businesses, tight, tighter space. So we're going to figure that out and figure out how to make this work uh, for everyone. There is an EDA grant that's coming out next uh, next week, uh, which is not even public yet, so I'm not, not sure if I'm supposed to say it, but it'll be public soon enough. But it's $50 million. Uh, it's a grant process for uh, from the Federal CARES Act that's gonna go straight towards small businesses. Um, the focus is going to be, from what I understand, on businesses on retail, not on those businesses that benefited from the PPP. So whereas my business, I have a business 14 employees, I did okay with the PPP, I have a marketing company, law firms, accounting firms, they did okay because they were able to sustain some sort of payroll and, and uh, you know, they did a lot better than a restaurant or a little shop. So we're, one of the problems with the PPP program, but um, the idea is to, is to really push this 50 million on those industries that really need it and prioritize them. Um, and that's everyone from your, your barber to your limo owner to uh, those industries that, that have it tough, that their, their markets have been killed in the sense that, that, that they're catering to the wedding industry. Every wedding has is, is now been canceled and or delayed. So it's trying to, you know, we're trying to get push and it's harder to do at the federal level, it's hard to do at state level. Uh, we're a little better at the local level, but we're trying to push everybody to do this 
as smart as possible and to try to make sure that we're helping those industries that truly need it. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. That's kind of a, a grand overview of uh, the world. Um, we're continuing to get through. I mean, I have, I can tell you my district alone, 1,100 unemployment active case files. We had 800 um, two weeks ago, and we actually got through about 500 of them. So there's, that continues to increase. Uh, we're getting through them. The Department of Labor, we nag them every day. We're on the phone with them. They, they called another, uh, they hired another 130 people. And it's an antiquated system of 20 years that, you know, when, you know, like you have any system, if it's a computer system, uh, electrical system, whatever it is, and you choose not to invest in it for 20 years, just like it's a problem with our water and our roads and everything, the price is, and it looks a lot different 20 years than if you maintained it the whole time. And, and that's a, a collective problem um, that everyone, uh, every government leader, every governor kind of deserves uh, blame for over these last 20 years. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I appreciate all that each of you are doing in mentoring uh, business owners and everything that SCORE does. So um, happy to open up if that works for you guys. Thanks so much, Senator. Um, I did have one quick question. I think we've had some questions sure. come through on the Q&A and I'll read them out in a second. But did you want to speak maybe quickly about the LD11 recovery program? Um, I know we have a couple of SCORE mentors that are now uh, involved in that as well in uh, volunteering with your program there that doesn't know it, and that's probably relevant yeah. to some of the small business owners here yeah so the recovery committee it's ld11recovery.com wait actually i don't know if that's it i'm sorry i'll probably give you a wrong website yeah, can, ld11 recovery ld11recovery.com is the website go on there there's going to be two sections uh for uh for, for restaurants takeout as well as uh, curbside retail as well as every piece of legislation that's coming out, every grant opportunity, and the recovery council that we had our first meeting this morning. And the point of this recovery council is really threefold. One is to make sure that business owners are educated and aware of all the different things happening. At the same time, if something is happening over this next year or two that we are, uh, that we are aware so we can do something. For example, we might have a situation where we find that you know, a couple of weeks, months from now, laundromats still have this challenge. I'm using them as an example. How do we get them to a better place? Or maybe restaurants are still struggling, whereas every other industry got by two years from now. Maybe we need to figure out a, a specific property tax exemption program just for that. I'm not saying that will happen, but it's that's the point of this ongoing council. Uh, the step, step two is working with all of our towns, making sure they're communicating. So um, you know, if you're McLoon's restaurant where there's one in Long Branch and Asbury Park and Seabright, if Long Branch is out opening up way too quick and Asbury Park's taking their time, it's really make sure there's coordination and see if we can do this all at the same time. There's also a public health element to that as far as crowd control. Um, so we want to do that as well as make sure these towns are all uh, utilizing as much outdoor space as possible. Um, so th those are the two areas. And then the third uh, one is to get proposals from different industries. Um, and we've already gotten a number, like I told you, the CrossFit. Um, and we're, we're trying to make sure we get enough so we can push that into the eyes of the decision makers at the front office. Uh, so they, they, uh, they're well aware of, of, of how different industries, again, the industries are the ones who know how they can uh, open responsibly. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put some, um, just uh, put some questions to you. We've had a few questions come in, so I'm gonna try and group them as best I can. Uh, but so sorry if there's a little bit of repetitiveness there. But um, so we've had uh, somebody has asked, can you explain the unemployment process for self-employed business owners? Um, yeah, so I would tell you, uh, look, it depends on what, we recently opened up on May 4th was the independent contractor pandemic um, fund. It's moving slow. If you live, uh, my, my email is sengopal at njleg.org. We're happy to look into your particular situation, see what you're eligible for, what you're not. If you live in our district, if you're not, the other senators and assembly people in Monmouth County are great and we'll connect you to their offices. Um, but uh, it, you should absolutely apply, even if you haven't paid into unemployment as, a, as an independent contractor or a small business owner, there is a pandemic fund that has been set up uh, in coordination with the state and federal government. So we will absolutely help you through that process. Varies business owner to business owner. And I put that, uh, I put the email address in the chat uh, box for everyone to see that. 
so another question is is the state budget that's identified by governor murphy the huge cost of battling COVID-19 likely to lead massive layoffs of state employees if funds are not forthcoming in a timely manner from DC? So the governor wants to borrow a lot of money um, and we are trying to wait, as, we, as everyone I think here knows, the state, we were, before walking in, before I entered the Senate two years ago, we were at a $32 billion deficit. I don't even want to think about what it is now. Um, but. Uh, and counties and towns can't create money. The only entity that can create money is the federal government. So our goal is to try to get federal government money. The first federal stimulus plan was really bad for New Jersey in the sense that New Jersey got the same amount of money per capita as Idaho or Wyoming or any other state did, which was really tragic. Um, it, it was a failure uh, on, you know, when Katrina happened, we sent resources to Louisiana. Uh, when Sandy happened, we got resources um, when things happen, resources go, uh, you know, 9-11, we sent resources. So more resources should have gone to New Jersey and New York based on the COVID-19 cases. That didn't happen. So we got some money in the first federal stimulus plan, nowhere near because the Congress people in the other states, which was, you know, I don't know how we allowed it to happen. Everybody got per capita money out of the 50 states. So our goal is to try to get more federal money. We're hopeful that that's going to happen. Uh, President Trump actually this morning I, I saw in the news report got, called Governor Murphy to notify that funding would be coming on as it relates to transportation, uh, NJ Transit, et cetera. But we, uh, we need more federal funding. Uh, the governor wants to borrow now. He wants to borrow a lot of money. We don't want to, I don't think the legislature wants to borrow any more than we need to borrow. First, I think it, it's important we have, we have to cut not saying cut payroll, cut personnel, but we have to take serious looks at what we can cut. It may not be sustainable for the governor to do his continued free community college program and some of the other things he, he wants to do or has done. I think some of those things need to get cut. We also need to look at other sources of revenue, um, a potentially a millionaire's tax, potentially an increase in the corporate tax because they've already you know gotten a 23% tax break uh, from the federal government or corporations. So I think we got to look at all of these things and figure out how to get the numbers to a place they are. And then if we don't get any federal money, then we borrow and it's the last resort. But I don't think it's going to be at the expense of, of laying off teachers or cops or anything like that. Okay, then we have an, a couple of questions that are similar. So I'm going to try and consolidate them. One is, um, is about the Jersey Shore and how is it possible to regulate how folks engage on the beaches and boardwalks? And then another question that was similar to that was, um, how is it possible last weekend somebody went to a, soup, a farm supermarket and although everyone was wearing a mask and dis the distancing was not happening, just it was out of, the words are out of control and the establishment didn't have anyone reminding the folks how to, to keep their distance or how to keep their distance. So kind of the same thing, right? Whether it's a supermarket or it's on the beaches, et cetera, how is it possible to regulate that? What are the plans to try and regulate those things? I think once we, as we reopen, we all just have to be as aggressive as possible. It's gonna be a community to community policing. People are gonna to have to speak up and literally say, hey, you're gonna to have to keep a few feet away from me. And uh, our businesses will obviously have to do that. I know Starbucks, you keep six feet in the line. They have a little marker there. But in other places, it's gonna take each of us when we're going somewhere to say, hey, can you keep your distance? And I think, that, you know, every poll indicates that the 95% of us that believe that social distancing is important have gotta keep that other very, very loud 5% alert, uh, um, alert. I don't know if it's practical to, to think we gotta open, right? So you're gonna have cases all the time. Uh, the, we can't just wait till Till there's a vaccine because there's already tons of people saying they're not going to take the vaccine um so with the with the absence of all of us doing the best we can to make sure everybody social distance and to shame them i'm not saying shame them on facebook or something but to speak up and say hey you guys should really keep your distance uh, again it's up to the i think it's up to the 95 percent of us um in the absence of that it's just we don't open and i don't know how we can not do that and then we have a question is that I know you spoke about hair salons earlier and that's a big topic it, so there is some talk about what can be done is there any plans of any time frame on when they may be able to open uh no timeline but I'm, my, my hope is and we've been pushing the guidelines will be out in the next two weeks uh hopefully once those guidelines are out um you know it will hopefully make things a little easier hopefully there'll be some outdoor scenarios we can create i know that's hard none of this is easy um but 
we're hoping soon. We have to figure out the six feet social distancing. There might be a mandatory temperature check or testing as people walk in, but I know it's important to try to get those guidelines out as soon as possible. Are there any plans for businesses to be held responsible in some way if their patrons don't conform to social distancing practices? Yeah, I'd like to see a warning and uh, I think business owners need to do, do a better job. I know some, we've had complaints on some supermarkets and I know they're overstaffed and some other businesses, but I think businesses have some responsibility. I can tell you when I reopen my business, whenever that day is, I'm, I'm gonna figure out everything and it's not a retail business, but maybe half the employees come in one day moving desks around. Uh, we've already contracted a company who's going to come in um, twice a week, do a full cleaning uh, of the entire office as far as um, disinfectants and the, and the whole nine yards. I think we're all going to have to, to try to be creative in trying to do that and uh, making sure we protect everybody. Then there's another question. Um, in China, they use cell phones to identify whether or not you've been tested and cleared. Is there any plans for doing anything like that for people to be able to identify as, you know, tested and cleared? First, I've heard of that. I, um, I'm definitely going to look into that. I haven't heard that yet. I think there's going to be a lot of creative testing that comes out, so they're all going to be good. Then there's a um, uh, uh, question. What are your thoughts on this? Sorry, Maya. Uh... What are your thoughts on this? Um, obviously, a vaccine would be great. Short of that, Paul Roma, a Nobel Prize winning economist, suggests we need to test everyone once every two weeks with positive cases re requiring contact tracing. I agree with that. I mean, look, I'm, not, I'm obviously not a health expert, but that's everything that, or any type of, uh, even close to anything, but uh, that's everything the Department of Health is saying is that it comes down to testing, testing, testing. As soon as, uh, as, soon as we test, uh, um, that's what's going to be most important. And then I think you commented on this earlier, but I'll just, uh, just to clarify, based on what you're hearing, what are the odds that you think we'll have a resurgence and another lockdown in the fall? Every health expert from Dr. Fauci down is saying likely high September, October. Um, it's hard to know. This is a new virus, a new strain of new, there are various strains of viruses. We've, we heard from some of the studies in New York that we actually got hit more with like a European version of this virus, whereas the, West Coast and California got hit more with the Asian Chinese version that, that started with this virus. So there's different strains of the virus. There's, there's a lot of pieces to it. And it's, it's gonna be an education process, I think no different than when we had the uh, flu pandemic in 1918. Okay, um, have you heard of any plans for Monmouth uh, Race Park? The crowds there are not usually large and given the size of this facility, it's sufficient to accommodate six feet of separation. Yeah, I think all that's on table. I actually had a conversation with Mom's Park's owner, Dennis Drazen, or his, their chairman this morning. He, he's putting a detailed plan together. Um, I think that's all on the table. I think like what we're seeing with a lot of the sports teams where uh, they might start off without spectators and, and uh, playing, I think we're going to see a lot of that. And uh, I think Mammoth Park has had horse racing, not unique to Mammoth Park, they're actually one of the better places because of all the things you could do there with, with mini golf and the, the beer garden and everything. But a lot of these racetracks, obviously, around the country and, and uh, have been struggling with capacity. So I think this is something that can be figured out. And hopefully, hopefully it will be very soon. And then there's four questions all kind of along the similar lines here. So I'll, I'm going to try and consolidate them. But so the, you spoke of a stimulus grant program earlier. That's mm -hmm. but that. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's so that's going to be through EDA and uh, I expect them to release details sometime uh, this Thursday or Friday, about a week from now. Uh, so keep an eye out. It's going to be well publicized. Um, but that is an EDA grant, state grant administered through their administering federal funds from the CARES Act, but it will be a state grant. Okay, so that will be available on the state website? Yeah, and obviously, uh, if anyone wants to follow me on Facebook, Senator Vingo Powell, we post pretty regularly, and obviously we'll post that the second it comes up, and you can also go to ld11recovery.com. Wonderful, thank you. Um, then another question, is the governor reaching out to other governors who have already reopened to see what's working and what's not? Uh, yeah, I mean, they have that, they have the, the regional uh, coalition that they have. I think it's like Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, Delaware, down to Rhode Island, down to 
down to uh, maybe Pennsylvania. I don't, I don't know where, where, I think it goes as far south down as Maryland. But yes, I know they're doing that. Uh, and I know they're, they're chatting with other governors who have reopened a little too quickly and their numbers are spiking uh, and too aggressively. So um, from my understanding, I don't know for sure, but for all the news reports I'm seeing, it looks like there's a lot of communication going on. Um, okay, so then there's another question here. Would like to know if we could get help for business owners who are landlords and are being impacted due to non-payment of rent by tenants and yet eviction is not an option. Um, rent for business owners who are landlords? Yeah, I've had that question. That's a, a great question and we're trying to, there's a few pieces of legislation moving. Uh, we're trying to help those smaller landlords out especially, and I know that's something we have to continue to work on. Um, if you want to send me a direct email with your information and your personal situation, we can try to get back to you. There was a situation in Red Bank of an individual who had a few properties that we've had three calls with uh, EDA on, so we're trying to get somewhere to see what kind of relief they can give um, to these smaller landlords that are in a tough spot, and many of them are working, working out plans with, the, with their tenants. Is there any conversation on how the arts are going to reopen for like movie theaters and galleries and those types of businesses? Yeah, it's all going to be based on capacity. Uh, many of them have started to put plans together. Count Basie Theater has been putting plans together. Um, you know, they, they postponed a lot of their shows. It's, those are the tough ones. Anything with big crowds are the tough ones to figure out. Um, it's going to involve testing, probably people coming in and out. And we're talking about not forever, but at least for the first few weeks while this goes on. Okay. Um, where and into which small opening uh, hang on, in all of this do not do nonprofits, especially small ones fall? With businesses large and small now struggling, where and how can nonprofits obtain donations on which they've always previously relied to sustain them? Please definitely email our office, sendgopalandnjlight.org. There's a number of bills that are moving through. One passed the Senate yesterday on charitable tax contributions for nonprofits. Um, it's tough for a lot of these nonprofit organizations. I know nonprofits were eligible for PPP, a number, number of them applied. Um, we have to look at other options, and that's going to be a piece after when this is all over on how to re reestablish and resustain a lot of our nonprofits. Also check out the New Jersey Pandemic Fund, uh, which is run by First Lady Tammy Murphy. I think about 15 of our nonprofits in Monmouth County have gotten a significant amount of money already. Um, there's other resources that we can try to push you towards. Um, okay, so then there's another question. You and the governor are both saying the numbers are flattening, but the number of deaths has been going up for the past four days. Are we still planning to open New Jersey soon? So it's hard to look at the, it's hard to look at any one day of data uh, on a death toll uh, because some, sometimes those deaths are calculated over time. Yeah, look, the reason why people need to take this seriously is that we still had 285 people die uh, and we're still at a place where, um, where people are dying every day, a lot of people. But with that said, the two things we look are the trend lines. The hospitalization number continues to go down, which means simply that more people are leaving the hospital every day than are coming in. So absolutely people are entering the hospital every day from COVID-19, but more people are leaving. We're also seeing the other thing is a lot of this is happening at our assisted living facilities. So when you look at the data all together, we're headed in the right direction. That doesn't mean it's not gonna spike back up and doesn't mean that we might not to reshut and re shut back down. That doesn't mean a lot of things, but as it stands right now, we cannot stay closed down forever until we get a vaccine that could take up to a year, year and a half. Um, we have to figure this out. And there, I, I truly believe there is a safe and responsible way to do this. Um, we have to avoid some of the noise. There are people that like to go out. Uh, you know, you see them, friends and family members and, and loved ones who write on Facebook and Twitter, we need to open up now, shut down everything. And, uh, everything needs to, to, to be open and th those are some of the most dangerous comments unfortunately because it's not a matter of no, nobody this is not fun for anybody I'm not having any fun at all doing any of this a lot of people are not having any fun doing this but this has to be done and it's and we're trying to figure out how is the most responsible way to reopen up and I think everybody wants to do that we want to go back to normalcy 
but uh, we have to make sure that we don't end up with uh, with thousands of more deaths. And I think that's that's the challenge. So as long as hospitalization numbers look decent, I think the move will be to continue to open up more and more and more and to monitor the phase. But again, it's gonna be like that faucet opening up a little bit each time. So just perhaps give you a give you a chance to take a breath and gather gather your thoughts. I just want to interject that just to say thank you for your patience and thank you for taking the time to answer all these questions. I'm sure you get tons of questions all day every day. So just from from us at SCORE and for the attendees, I'll speak for the attendees on the call. I just you know thank you for that. Um, and before we go into any more questions, did you have any thoughts you want to throw out or anything you wanted to add before I take no. some questions? No, all good. Okay, great. Um, do you have any insight on the DMV, especially adding more online options? For example, commercial vehicles who can't pay renewals online, transferring vehicles and things like that. Um, everything should be delayed at the motor vehicle, um, but I'm absolutely, if you can shoot me an email, send GoPal to NJ like which options you're talking about. We have a really good relationship with the motor vehicle, so we can absolutely talk to them. But my understanding is that everything has been pushed back, everything has been delayed, so, um, but we should look, towards adding more online options um, and see specifically your situation. So now that the beaches um, are going to be reopening uh, Memorial Day, is that the same for, for pools, public and private? I don't think any guidance has come out for pools yet. I would expect it to come out uh, in the next week or so. I would expect it. I think you're gonna see something similar as far as capacity and the uh, number of people. How will businesses be protected from liability issues of customers claiming that they perhaps caught a virus in, in their establishment? That's a great question. And that's for surprise, it's the first time I got that question. Uh, and I have actually not thought about it until this question came. Um, I will look into that. Um, there was a bill that went through yesterday to uh, expand liability through workers' comp um, for, for folks that get it. Um, look, one of the big reasons we were not able to do business interruption insurance because the insurance companies literally said, hey, if you're going to, we have a contract. It's crazy. I, I remember I didn't have any interruption insurance after Sandy and my business got completely annihilated. And so then I got this policy for storms and hurricanes or whatever. And I probably paid $1,200 a year or whatever, I paid $12,000. And now, of course, that policy is not go to here. So now we need to add viruses until the next thing happens. Um, but we wanted to go back and add viruses and, and it's not possible. Legally, the insurance companies were threatening, threatening to take the state to court and say, if you make us go back to these contracts that we already had and add viruses back, it's not. And every legal um, advice that we got said that we would be shut down, uh, that policy would be shut down and it could cost a lot. Um, so we have to figure out, I mean, we, we have, that's a conversation worth happening, having with these, with, these, uh, with these insurance companies. The other thing is, what does it mean to get the virus? There's no, there's no, uh, there's no cure for this virus, right? So it's, it's, you have to stay home. It's, it's just really how dangerous this virus is around people that have compromised health systems uh, or are older. Um, so it's really trying to figure out how to, how to navigate that. I mean, you get the virus, you got to go quarantine for two weeks. And if you get worse, you end up in the hospital and with oxygen and, and God forbid, hopefully you don't need it, but a ventilator. Um, that's, that's the process right now until more research and science is done on how we, how we go around this. We've heard, you know, different medications and the hydro uh, medicine, medicine and vitamin C, but there's really no study yet on exactly how, how this virus is uh, defeated. Um, and a couple of questions about specific industries. Any conversations about how dentists will reopen? The dentists are actually allowed to open already. There was, um, there was guidance earlier today. I actually have a Zoom at four o'clock with the dental association in the county um, to go through, but uh, dentists are allowed to open right now, but it's at their discretion. So they need to, this, a dentist can open, they need to decide if the patient, you can't go in, if they think, uh, you know, you haven't had a cleaning in two years, you could get gingivitis, they know the patient, it's their discretion where they want to take it. We, the state has encouraged them not to take uh, patients they don't need to take right now. If a patient can wait a month, that is the uh, urging that they've gotten. 
if any dentist uh, you know that you're connected to has any questions, have them reach out to our office or to the New Jersey Dental Association, and we can get them specific policies. That applies for orthodontists also, um, but that really is the goal: is to is uh, you know not it's up to the dentist. If they feel that the appointment is necessary, then take the patient. Do the best you can. Um, we don't want them to get long-term damage in any way as a result of not being able to go to the dentist. There's some question about tennis. Um, hold on one second. I'm just. Um, how will indoor tennis clubs open if half capacity or doubles play has four on four on each court with six courts filling 24 at full capacity? How can managers force layers to finish contact? contract of 11 weeks when members are frontline? Oh, this is multiple questions. US. Yeah, uh, I, I, was, I would say tennis balls is something. I was actually just looking at, let me just see if I got, I just got a text here. Yeah, we're pushing on tennis courts uh, and I think we're gonna have some guidance very soon. Um, I just actually had an email from the US Tennis Association that they were pushing on something. I, I didn't say anything relevant except they want to be open. Um, I. I I think you're going to see a similar scenario. Maybe uh, you might not see doubles play for a little while. It might be singles. You might have one court in between. You might be half the capacity, but I think you're going to see a lot of that stuff. And I'd be surprised if it's not in the next week. It's crazy. It's kind of crazy that we the public courts are open right now. A lot of parks are not private ones. Then there's two questions about colleges. What what's the plan for colleges and when they may? Is there any thoughts on when they may be? I just spoke uh, yesterday with the president of Monmouth University. We went through a ton of stuff, uh, concerns they have. Um, nothing yet. I mean, listen, we could be in a scenario where we're not open in September. We open in September and we got to reshut right back down. Um, they're planning for it. They're planning. I know Monmouth is planning, uh, as is Brookdale, for their electronic uh, uh, online, online classes and everything. And it's all about just being prepared. If we reopen, we reopen. Obviously, we hope that happens. But there might be times when we might need to, to shut back down until, until we have a vaccine, until we're in a safer place. So I think they're all just making the best plans that they can. So just back to the stimulus for the hospitality industry, would movie theaters fall under that for financing? This EDA bill I just uh, mentioned, yes. The 50 million that's coming out, yes, theaters are eligible. Are there any metrics that show the level of comfort of people wanting to go back versus staying safe at home? Every metric, so there have been three different polls and I'm a believer in polls because polls are done scientific. So we've had actually four polls, I believe. There's been one by Monmouth University, which has a renowned polling institute, uh, Rutgers Eagleton, um, as well as uh, Quinnipiac, all did polls that show that uh, uh, roughly 70% of the people think that the social distancing steps that have been taken are good and actually 15% on top uh, think we haven't gone far enough. So again, it's a very, very loud 15% um, and they're loud and I get it and they're frustrated as they have every right to be because uh, everyone is going through a different circumstance situation and I'm certainly not one to judge anyone's independent situation here. So with that said, the data does show um, that most New Jerseyans, and we've seen it, they, New Jerseyans overwhelmingly complied with the social distancing these last two months, which is why we have the ability to start moving slowly, but um, decisively in trying to open some of these things. Um, there is um, a question about what is being done to ensure we have enough PPE ventilators, etc., in the event that a second wave comes uh, in the fall for our frontline workers. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we are, I know everyone's working now, the, uh, the, the hospitals, we do a daily hospital call, they're all working to make sure they have enough data. Uh, our assisted livings piece is just really the tragic one in all this, to make sure that they have enough. Um, we had a call last week with EDA and some of the companies that were looking to potentially create factories in New Jersey. I think that's something the state, we've urged the governor and EDA to invest in that and to provide tax incentives for, to try to get some factories here that can, that can do hand sanitizer here. Even if it costs a little bit more than going to China, um, there's got to be a way to do it and to do gloves and to do masks and K95 and N95 and all that stuff. So it's an active conversation and I think that we're trying to push everyone to be as prepared as possible. 
Um, so now, apparently, Rite Aid is now testing anyone for COVID-19. Should everyone be getting tested? Previous guidance was only that people with symptoms should be tested. Yeah, that would be for a health expert, certainly not a politician. Um, and I would listen to the health experts on that. I think it's getting close to that point. I know that many places have started to test asymptomatic um, and others in the household and anyone who's been exposed, et cetera. Um, but I think that, uh, yeah, we got to get there. Um, I, I think it's, I, I'm hoping that they say that relatively soon. I know you can go into urgent care centers now and they test anyone too. So I think we have to get to a place very, very soon where we're testing everybody. So it's, I'm just conscious of your time um, and it's 10 to four. So we're gonna start, try to start to wrap it up. There's a couple more open questions. I'd ask people after that, um, perhaps if you have questions, you can either email someone at SCORE or, or email or, or reach out to the Senator's office directly. So we'll just take these last three questions. One of them is there's a huge lack of social distancing in stores. And I feel like uh, as a salon, it can be controlled more. Uh, why does it seem like corporations have eased restrictions, but small businesses are bearing the burden? They shouldn't. And if a corporation is easing restrictions and they're not allowing, I think there needs to be way more accountability. If you Google uh, COVID19.nj.gov, um, there's a website to report any any uh, challenges, I can tell you we've reported a ton. Uh, so we need to make sure there needs to be accountability uh, on that front. Um, okay, so you had mentioned earlier that even though you don't want to think about it, our state deficit is already huge. What impact does that have for us to function in the near term? We're already maxed out on property taxes and the schools need more dollars. Is there a master plan? Um, we just have to, yeah, I mean, look, we're going to go into budget season, we have to get federal funds, and then we may have to borrow. Uh, and that's really where we leave it. Okay. Um, and then just one final question, which is, are you aware of any blood donation programs locally for people who have rec recovered from the virus? Yeah, so plasma, um, if you, uh, not off the top of my head, but if you want to email us, send gopal at njleg.org, uh, more than happy to try to get that answer for you. And I actually think I can answer that. I believe there is a place in Linden, New Jersey that does um, plasma. I know that because my husband went to donate plasma last week. So, um, so I believe that the, for plasma, that's check uh, the places in Linden, New Jersey. Um, Senator, thank you so much. Thank we you guys. Really appreciate your time. I, if you, I don't know if you have any closing thoughts or any closing comments that you wanted to make. No, thank you all. Thank you, Claire. Uh, thanks for the questions. Reach out. We got through a good 30, 35 of them, I think. But if you have more, um, please feel free to reach out. Thank you for what SCORE is doing and whatever you guys need. Just, just please let me know and we'll try everything we can. Wonderful. Now, if you want, to, I'm going to wrap up, but if you wanted to drop off just being respectful of your time, feel free. Uh, I won't, Thank you very much. won't be offended. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks, Senator. Thank you everybody so much for joining and being a part of our Friday series again. I hope that you guys all found that useful. Um, it was great to have the Senator joining us and I apologize if anybody is offended that we let him go a little early, just wanted to be conscious of his time. Just a reminder that uh, SCORE is a free business mentoring uh, service. We're sponsored by the SBA. And if you are looking for free business mentoring, there are a number of mentors in your area that you can reach out to. Uh, double check our website at www.monmouth.score.org. Next week, we have Jess Jeff Vassa, who is the executive director of New Jersey Travel and Tourism. He's gonna to be speaking about some of the things that the uh, Division of Travel and Tourism is going to be doing to kind of help us throughout the summer months and some promotions and things that's happening there. So please join. We have webinars every Friday. As I said, we may change the timing on them just depending on what some of the responses are because of the summer months coming up. But stay tuned, follow our website, follow our Facebook page, follow our, um, us on social media, and hopefully we'll see everybody next week. Thank you very much for joining.